This is the week 21 video. I'm going to go through it quickly. Remember, if you need to stop, you can pause the video at any time to write and then start again. So please do that as I move through this quickly. All right, so the very first thing in week 21 was this foldable. It's, you need to make a six tab foldable. Okay, you can just take your paper, draw one, two, three, four, five lines on it, and that will give you six different tabs. You simply need to label each tab as it says here with each one of these forces. And then under each tab, you are going to define each one. You can use this here, or you can use the textbook, but this should not take you more than six or seven minutes. So please pause and get that done if you didn't get the check for number one. Number two. It's on page on the next page. Uh, I didn't number these pages, but I think you should have them labeled. This is page, I don't know, one, two, three, two, six, eight. I think it's page nine here. Okay, whatever. Okay, so it says, What would happen to the baseball player if the force of friction doesn't exist? Right here, it says the sliding baseball picture would continue moving at a constant speed if friction did not exist. So you will want to write that right there. Remember to pause if you need. Number three says, explain the force which is acting on the sweater when you pull it over your head, okay? Oh, it says, first of all, it says which force is acting on it, okay? But the problem that a lot of, most people missed on this is because they didn't explain. You need to do two things. So tension is the answer. It's the tension force, as you can see there. And the reason it's the tension force is because when you pull a sweater over your head, you have to stretch it to do it, okay? So that's the reason. Four, it says, what is the force that works against a horizontal push? Remember, vertical means up and down, but horizontal, okay, it means side to side. Okay, so like a book sliding across a desk, and it says here that when forces are balanced horizontally or when an object is moving in a horizontal direction, okay, the force that it acts on it is sliding friction, okay? It's going to be friction, but if it's moving, it's sliding friction. Remember? That friction always moves in the opposite direction of an object's motion. That's for two mo objects that are in contact. Five is on the next page. It says, when you are standing on a sidewalk, what two forces are acting on you vertically? Remember, vertically means up and down. You know that gravity is acting downwards. Okay, And then here, the normal force is the upward force that balances the downward pull of gravity. So the two forces that are acting on you are gravity and the normal force. This is actually number 10. Okay, this was that one that copied all crazy, but you can go back and check it out. Um, this one says, distinguish, which means tell the difference between the two types of forces that produce elastic forces. And by completing this graphic organizer, and if you read in the text, it would tell you exactly this. Okay, elastic forces, there's two types. There's the tension forces and there's compression forces. Tension forces, um, oh, well, let me back up. Remember, a force is always a push or a pull on an object. And a tension force is a pulling force that is exerted when an object is stretched. However, a compression force is a pushing force that is exerted when an object is squeezed. Okay. This is actually number nine. A lot of people, again, put some crazy stuff here. But if you read the directions, it says it wants you to classify, which means it wants you to group. Okay, forces that act in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction. Where again, we say a horizontal was side to side and we said vertical was up and down. And so we're talking about the directions of the force, forces. But right in the directions, it tells you that they act in two directions. One's the horizontal direction and one's the vertical direction. And I spelled that wrong. That should be AL there. Okay. Now, we already said, like from the previous question, when you were standing on the sidewalk, that gravity in the normal force act in the vertical direction. And see that there's two bubbles here? So this must be the bubble that goes under vertical. Now, when the other example, we talked about the baseball slider or the book going across the desk. And the force that acts in the horizontal or sideways direction is friction. All right, number 10 on the next page. Okay, remember, we talked about this also earlier. Weight is, has magnitude. It has size and direction towards the center of the earth. And because it has that, it's a vector. So weight is a vector. It has both size or magnitude and direction. Now, when you push an object, okay, it says the force due to static friction. Remember, if you push an object and it doesn't move, okay, the force you are experiencing is static friction moving in the opposite direction. 
But the more you push, if you push harder, you can, if you're strong enough, you can overcome, overcome static friction. It will get smaller and then become sliding friction as the object starts to move. So the force due to static friction decreases as you increase the force you apply to a non-moving object. So if an object's not moving, if you push hard enough, you can get the static friction to decrease and become sliding friction. So that was six and seven. Eight, it says the normal force is exerted by it. Now if you go through and you do all of these, okay, you might have to go back and forth to decide which one. But the answer that you're ultimately gonna have to decide on is gonna be elastic force because the compression force and normal force and all these other ones better fit in the other examples. But the normal force, okay, it's an elastic force which means it's either a compression or, um, so let me just go in elastic force. It's either compression or tension, okay, but when you're standing on the ground and gravity is acting down on you and normal force is acting up, okay, nothing's being stretched, okay, but you can kind of think of your body as kind of compressing the sidewalk, and that's compression is an elastic force, so that's why this one should be elastic force. All right, that's week 21. Again, if you need anything, make sure you pause, go back, watch it, get this done quickly, and move on so you can catch up.